thought I'd make this video as a follow-up to the one I made uh, over two years ago. Uh, I've got it here on screen in front of me here. Getting started with Unreal 01 Publishing to the Web, um, which reflected the ability in uh, UE 4.23 to be able to export to HTML5 and then on to the web. Um, so I had a very brief look at it um, and although it had uh, limitations it was a way of getting a finished albeit small project online and that was um, deprecated from 4.24 onwards and there hasn't been a way there's been a small uh, community effort to keep this thing going but there hasn't been a uh, anything from epic to allow publishing to the web formally and i've been asked about this number of times uh, in relation to the video and keep coming up with the same stuff but i thought i'd put something out there about a means in which you can export some things onto the web uh, that i have just been testing out in case it's of use to anyone else so um the thing is the using the gltf format which has been um, championed by the Kronos group. And there is uh, an exporter plugin. This goes up to 4.27 currently. So not UE5, which is now out. So if you go to the marketplace and type in GLTF, the thing you want is GLTF exporter. Here it is, 4.25 to 4.27. Um, you install that to the engine. Once it's in the engine, it then becomes available as a plugin. So I've already done that and I've got uh, an open project with that installed. I'll just show you, um, I'm sure you're familiar with how to load a plugin, but if you go to uh, Unreal Settings, Plugins, and if you search for GLTF, GLTF Exporter for the Kronos GLTF 2.0 there's also an importer uh, there as well and it, I've also got a plugin for using it in uh, Datasmith but anyway that's now enabled in the project and what it is it means that I can take either an asset um, or indeed a level uh, I haven't tried out a level sequence yet um, but in this instance I'm going to show you a few instances of, of, of what it does so I've got this um, level here it's fairly simplistic I think there's a media texture that might run on here that doesn't come across I've got, I think, a Mixamo character with an animation. Um, there's some meshes going on here. Um, this animation here doesn't come across either. It's very partial, but um, it may be of use if you want um, a lightweight way to show somebody um, a kind of 3D layout you've created in Unreal. So how do you go about doing it? It's fairly straightforward. So um, I just find the level here and I right click it. Is it right click? Yeah and choose asset actions export and because i have um, loaded the plugin i have not only the usual choice of exports but i've got additionally now one for this gl transmission format gltf now because there are a multitude of files that are created when you export in this format um, what you should do is create a folder so um, go new folder and then go gltf4 i'm not going to do this but i'm just this is how you create a folder <laughs> imaginatively um, and then find gltf here and click save and this then um, calls up this prompt box i've been using uh, the default settings it does um, have to scale it down quite considerably so leave that as is although it looks quite extreme um, I've tried with with several things including with uh, meta humans which don't seem to um, export with any degree of success but I've kept the um, material bake size at 1024 um, all the others I've left the same <coughs> um, I think I've turned on animation sequences if that's not on um, as I, say, I haven't tried uh, level sequences yet um, but I'm using the default settings here and then just click export. So I won't do that now because this is a um, fairly large file and takes maybe about five, 10 minutes, but uh, using the old, here's one I prepared earlier. So 
here we are. It creates a, clearly not, here we are. It creates a folder, um, so from this scene, these are the clutch of files that it's created. So it's creating uh, PNGs and normal maps and so on and so forth. Um, and then this is the main file. Actually, this is the main file here. Um, total size of this is 75 megs. Okay, so once you have that folder, you can then go to um, this site. Uh, I'll put it in the link below, gltf-viewer.doncurdy.com. And if we go back here, what you do is simply drag the folder here. And then, there it goes. It comes up here like this. Um, and you've got various options here to um, display a background, you can show it in uh, wireframe, uh, skeleton, there, um, create, auto rotate just uh, gives you kind of display functionality so you can see around the scene, it doesn't seem that you can change the speed of that screen space pan, I'm not sure what that does, um, background color, change, lighting, um, various options here to change the background of what we're seeing there. Um, exposure levels, add lights. And in terms of animation, um, I've got additional animations here that, that power the, the kind of water fountain and the, the media, but although they're acknowledged here, they don't seem to be playing back, although the idle state for the mix mode character does. Um, I didn't have any additional cameras there. Let's try. Ah, yes. So it is recognizing cameras. That's something I've just discovered in the course of this video. Um, so I could set up cameras here. So this makes it more useful if you're doing uh, a kind of very basic uh, mock-up previs for somebody. You can put some camera positions in. Um, I tried bringing in an audio file, which kind of would have worked. Um, that's a very deep breathing uh, character there. Isn't it? We'll go back to the default camera. Turn off the auto rotate because that can be quite irritating. Um, there we go. And then I've got the ability to move around this scene because it is 3D, and as you can see, that idle state is still okay. So it is not the solution that we could really do with in terms of having uh, the web as a viable platform to publish uh, work, but it is a useful viewing tool for sharing work. So I uh, just thought I'd share that with you.